Good to have you with us. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, Mr. Peter Lockhart, uh, uh, senior producer and mixing engineer for the great Earl Garner uh, 1963 uh, night concert. Peter, just tell us how this came about. Uh, how did you guys put this thing together back in uh, 63? Uh, well, good to be with you today. Thanks for, thanks for having me. Um, well, you know, th this record really came about as part of the Errol Garner Jazz Project that we've been uh, working on right. uh, for the last three or so years. Um, and uh, the first, first release was the complete concert by the sea, and then we, we right. released Ready Take One. Um, which was a, a, a collection of studio recordings. And after Ready Take One, we knew that we wanted the next to Garner record to be another live recording because, um, you know, he was amazing and prolific in the studio and did all kinds of uh, incredible things, but uh, he most loved to perform for audiences and just, you know, exuded an energy that was unlike any other performer. So um, we went digging through the archives and listening to all the different um, unreleased live recordings that we might uh, released and when we when we found the the tapes from Amsterdam and and uh, listened to those it was just like a, a lightning strike we just we knew that that was the next tape that we uh, wanted to release. You know what was interesting. Uh, you know I saw the liner notes where uh, it was saying that uh, uh, Philips uh, Recording uh, Company uh, they released few uh, selective. Uh, uh, you know, selections of that uh, album, but never been released in North America. And what's happened between that? I guess uh, it was contractual issues, or what was it? Well, you know, I'm not sure why it never uh, made it to the United States. Um, but you know, it, it was the it was part of a five record deal that Errol uh, did with Phillips in in the in the early '60s, mm -hmm. and this was the last record uh, that he licensed to to Phillips, and it was released. Uh, in Europe and Australia, as you said, um, and eight of the songs on this concert were, were on that LP, but they they heavily edited his introductions. And as most uh, Errol Garner fans know, the introductions to his songs mm -hmm. are where er Errol really sort of stretches out and explores. Exactly. Uh, and so on this on this recording, we were able to include eight eight new songs that no one has ever heard before, uh, as well as uh, eight songs from the LP, but with the introductions uh, restored. Now I understand that uh, the basically the program for that night wasn't even detailed as far as the selection, so they were just on stage improvising and going from one song to another. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. I mean, Errol's uh, Errol's program that was written by his, his manager Marcy Glazer, right? Uh, you know, states, um, uh, you know, first first set of in, in, improvisations, uh, second second set of improvisations. So. Yeah, that wasn't uh, it wasn't detailed, and it was a it was a concert that was recorded starting at midnight, because there was a, a classical uh, uh, performance earlier in the evening that was like oh. 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know they 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 struck the hall and reset it and uh, filled it with 2,000 fans. So it was totally packed, and they all played from about um, you know uh, just after midnight until around almost three in the morning. You know, what's, what was interesting, I saw this note about uh, uh, Miss Susan Rosenberg, that uh, she used the royalties from uh, Misty, the famous composition of uh, uh, Earl Garner, to fund the project. Is that, uh, this is just w wonderful. I mean, Misty is, is like a Miles Davis kind of blue, uh, you know, uh, probably the most uh, registered and well-known, uh, uh, you know, number in the jazz uh, sort of a highlight of the jazz history. Yeah, certainly. And it, it's one of the great jazz standards of all time. And uh, it's one of Errol's, um, it's, it's one of Errol's greatest compositions. Um, what, what's, what I find really interesting is that he actually composed about um, you know, 200 uh, other songs that have been published and mm -hmm. hundreds more that, have, that remain unpublished. And he was just a prolific, prolific uh, composer. Um, and and also a master arranger and um, right. so you know one of the things that we've been exploring with these new releases are his unreleased original compositions. Um, so there's one of those on this record, and that's uh, that Amsterdam Swing, which we believe is a, a a song that he composed on you know on on the spot wow. for, the, mm -hmm. for the concert that night. And his rhythm section, you know Eddie Calhoun for uh, who played with Ama yeah. Jamal and Johnny Griffin and. And uh, he was from Mississippi, moving to Chicago, interesting, and always wanted to be his uh, bass player. And then uh, Kelly Martin 
on drums. Uh, he was uh, Ruth Brown and Erskine Hawkins' uh, drummer, so coming from a more sort of a bluesish side of the business. So this is incredible uh, rhythm section. Yeah, a really a really incredible group of guys. They were they were Errol's longest running rhythm section, mm-hmm. um, and uh, and you know because of the way that Errol performed in terms of you know not only did he not tell the audience what he was going to play, but he didn't tell he didn't tell his band what he was going to play either. And so you know uh, Eddie was right there perched over his left shoulder watching mm-hmm. watching his band because he wasn't sure you know what song he was going to play. And then once mm-hmm. once he was sure what he was going to play, for example, Night and Day. You know, Errol decides to reharmonize it on the fly, and so he's got to, he's got to watch his hands uh, for the new changes, which is which is you know takes a lot of skill, and uh, these guys pull it off flawlessly. By the way, this uh, Mac Avenue label, you know, I've been uh, doing this uh, radio show for 41 years, and um, dealt with a lot of uh, uh, small labels, big labels, but I tell you, right now, I think Mac Avenue, as far as their roster and quality of the music they put out uh, they definitely in my opinion uh, as far as their list of the current uh, artists they're ahead of uh, Blue Note what you are know, your thoughts I mean, on we that? Feel, we yeah. feel that way too mm-hmm. you know we feel that Mac Avenue is you know one of the, the most or if not the most exciting uh, jazz label um, operating today and that's why we were so excited to be working with them on this record yeah, and as a matter of fact, yeah. we met with them. And mm-hmm. go ahead. No, go ahead. Please. No, I was saying that. Uh, we, oh, well, we, we, you know, we, to see you. go for it. Yeah, we put together a non-profitable organization about eleven years ago in Baton Rouge called uh, the River City Jazz Master Series, and uh, we're a bunch mm-hmm. of professionals. They're lawyers, myself, uh, uh, ex-professor of LSU, music department, who's a bass player. And we never thought that we we're going to last more than two years. Now, here we are, 11th year. We brought Ama Jamal, McCoy Tyner, Joe Lovano, and then a whole bunch of uh, Mac Avenue artists. And in spring of next year, 2019, we have uh, the Monterey Jazz All-Stars, and they have uh, four or five of top guys from and the ladies from uh, Mac Avenue. We've got uh, Mac Lauren Sylvan, Cecile. Yeah, Sands. Yeah, she's and Christian yeah, Sands, exactly. Our, our co- yeah, our co producer and creative ambassador. Yeah, Christian is, you know, I think he's one of the most exciting pianists alive today. He's, he is uh, just a phenomenal talent. And, um, and you know, for, such, for such a young guy, uh, he's got just an incredible feature ahead. Um, he's got some exciting projects, you know, uh, that he's doing on his own aside from what he's up to with us. Um, and, and, you know, it's just so much fun to watch. To a to watch him play and perform, but uh, to watch his career and watch him, you know, he's he's, he's on the rise. It's pretty exciting to to watch. You know, last week I reviewed his brand new album, Facing Dragons, and it's out of this world. It's yeah, a, it's yeah, an incredible album. I, I was lucky enough to to be there for a little bit of the recording of it, and it was a, a really special, really special experience. He's he's a like as I said, he's just a phenomenal talent. Well, tell us about his involvement with uh, uh, the night concert the album, uh, as far as uh, you know, bringing some sort of a, uh, insight as far as producing and re- remixing and all that. Well, you know, I mean, as a, as a pianist and a band leader, um, you know, Christian has an ability to you know, to sort of intuit Garner's style and Garner's choices, right? Um, in a way that that uh, nobody else on our team can. Mm-hmm. And and so you know when we're when we're when we're mixing and we're mastering, you know um, he's really able to sort of uh, give us a sense of okay you know what was Errol you know what might have Errol been thinking when he was you know uh, doing this he was such a dynamic player and one of the things that we we dealt with in in mixing and mastering the record was trying to capture those dynamics in a way that um, you know that's going to allow the listener to feel like they're back in the room um, because uh, you know he'll play. You know, to play as, as quietly as you can imagine on, on a tune like My Funny Valentine, uh, you know, and then and then uh, a few bars later, about as loudly as one could. And um, and you know, Christian's Christian's talent really is, uh, um, you know, um, uh, in- instrumental in, in helping to uh, to you know uh, get us to navigate those sections. You know, what's interesting, and I saw that in the liner notes, uh, a little bit of touch of uh, 
uh, uh, Claude Debussy and Eric Satie in, in some of the uh, performance uh -huh. that night. And that, that's incredible. Yeah, I mean, you know, Garner had such wide-ranging uh, um, uh, in inspirations, you know, from uh, obviously every, through, throughout the jazz idiom, but um, through classical music and popular music, he was really a sponge mm -hmm. for uh, everything that he heard, and then he would synthesize it through his own uh, artistry and, uh, and you know, share it with his audiences. So, um, you know, people never knew what they were going to get, and they, they got a different thing every time he sat down on the piano. So uh, right now, the University of Pittsburgh has like the archives uh, or some sort of a historical information about Earl Garner. Is that correct? Or yeah, so the, the physical archives were donated to the University of Pittsburgh in 2014. And, oh, okay. Uh, and those those archives consist of um, three and a half thousand reel-to-reel -reel tapes. Wow. Uh, tens and hundreds of thousands of documents. Um, uh, clothing, uh, ephemera, all, all, everything you can imagine. It's one of the largest archives of its kind. Mm -hmm. um, and and uh, then Octave Music retained the, uh, the rights to the, his, his publishing catalog and master recording. And that's why we're able to uh, release uh, the music that we're releasing. And uh, um, but yeah, the, all of the archives are available at the University of Pittsburgh for, for research. Um, and right. they can go and they can see the telegrams that uh, Martha sent to Errol from the night of the concert, mm -hmm. um, and uh, that Errol sent back to her later that night. You know, I mean, it's, it's like right. having some text messages. It's really it's exciting. And I I know that Jerry Allen uh, uh, on that famous uh, earlier recording uh, in Carmel uh, concert by the sea, she was involved in that as well. And yeah. she was teaching at the uh, University of Pittsburgh. Great talent. And so sorry to see she's gone, you know? Yeah. I mean, just a, a tremendous loss for the world and, yeah. and for certainly for our project in particular. I mean, Jerry was, Jerry was, uh, you know, one of the founding members of the Errol Garner jazz project and, you know, sort of our North star when it came to, um, you know, what we were up to, and, and she was instrumental in bringing the archive to the University of Pittsburgh. So we've, uh, we've certainly been, you know, reeling and continue to be reeling from, from that loss. But, right. Uh, um, you know, I think we know that she want us to uh, carry on Earl's legacy. She did so much for his legacy uh, that, um, that you know, we were, we were trying to sort of follow in her footsteps. And, That's great. Uh, and part of that is, you know, she introduced us to Christian through mm -hmm. her uh, Three Pianos tribute to Errol Garner. Um, she did a, uh, she re-envisioned re his Concert by the Sea material uh, in a three pianos uh, uh, format that was really just uh, incredible. It was, it was Jerry and uh, Jason Moran and Christian Stan, oh, yeah. the first time it was performed. Mm. And, um, and um, yeah, it, it, uh, it was really something special. Well, Peter, tell us a little bit about yourself. What are you doing these days? What's your next project? Well, you know, I'd love to tell you what the next project is. Uh, we're not quite ready to talk about that yet. We're still very focused on a night concert, but I, sure. I promise that we're uh, we're hard at work on on the next uh, the next material that you'll hear from the Garner Archive. Great. Um, and the, you know the the beauty of of uh, the archive and and the, the the genius of Errol's performance and also his manager's um, you know pr progressive thinking uh, is very important to them both. That Errol control. Uh, his catalog, and so right. because of that, uh, all of these tapes are not sitting in uh, you know the vault, the record labels strewn all across the world. They're they're all in one place, mm. and that's really uh, there's very few very few artists uh, who can say that about their their archives and their catalog. So um, the world will uh, will not want for more Errol Garner recordings. I can promise you that. Well, you know. Uh, as you know, his performance live is something else. I mean, the studio recordings are great, but uh, when you're doing the live uh, uh, sort of a spontaneous uh, improvisation on stage, that's something else that uh, nobody can match. Yeah, he was really um, a, a one-of-a-kind performer, um, and, and yeah, he touched so many people um, with his music when he was alive, and, and he continues to inspire uh, not only fans but, but young musicians, um, you know, up and coming musicians uh, who who you know um, hear Errol, we hope and think, uh, 
you know, oh, there's, you know, there, there's other ways to do this. Um, there, there's other opportunities. There's other, there's other possibilities with these tunes. Um, so, um, yeah, he he was a uh, he was a, a real genius, and um, and and that was uh, thrown around a lot. But um, you know, when, when it comes to Errol, it's uh, it's, a, it's a, it couldn't be a more true statement. By the way, I have to congratulate you guys and the Mac Avenue for the liner note for the cover of the uh, CD. Uh, it's it's just magnificent. It's very sort of a classy, uh, you know, and and the beautiful uh, information insights, in, including the uh, the telegram that he sent, uh, uh, you know, to his ma uh, to his manager, you know, talking about uh, uh, wonderful show. Won't know until I hear the right. tapes. You know, <laughs> this this is incredible right. stuff. Right. right. So so that. Well, thank you. I mean, we know I I couldn't be happier and more grateful to uh, to, to Dr. Robin, C.G. Kelly, and to Nate Chinnon for their incredible liner notes. I mean, these are two of the most uh, um, uh, incredible writers that are, that are that are doing it today. And right. Um, uh, I was able to work with a great team out of Buffalo, New York, called White Bicycle on the design. Um, and uh, and then you know at the end of the day we brought it to Mac Avenue and and they really got behind it and uh, um, that's I just you know you, you can't say enough about them for doing that and for for uh, helping us to uh, to create this record. So, and I understand there are some like it. sure, and I understand there's an LP version of that. Is that correct? Av available? Yeah, I mean I'm I'm kind of a vinyl head. Uh, vinyl is my my format of choice. So w when I approach these these releases, I always envision them first as a vinyl record, uh, and then we, we try to make a really faithful, beautiful CD version of it, but uh, I highly recommend the vinyl to anyone that, uh, that's inclined. Um, well, Peter, if you get a chance, uh, if you, whenever you have time at your convenience, send us uh, one of the LPs, and we're going to basically uh, uh, send it to LSU Library, and that's going to be part of the archive, so I think that'll be very nice to have it here at the LSU as well. Yeah, sure thing. I'd love to. Um, uh, I think I have your email through Josh. So yeah, we'll, uh, yeah, that'll uh, be beautiful. Take your address, and we'll, we'll get one sent out to you. You know, we got uh, we got some sort of a special uh, relationship with Southern University, where Professor Alvin Batiste taught for many years, and now the institute is named after him, and he was my mentor. So through him, I got to know Bramford Marcellus and and all the guys who graduated under him, and then not too far from us, not more than. Uh, uh, 40 miles is Southeastern University, and that's where Bill Evans went to school. Mm. So, you know, we uh -huh. got, yeah, we, we got a lot of great stuff right around, uh, you know, Baton Rouge, between Baton Rouge and New Orleans. There's so many activities, you know, music wise, you know, all genres. So, uh, this is a wonderful, oh, absolutely. yeah, this is a wonderful opportunity to chat with you. And, um, you know, thank you so much for your time, taking time to call us from Europe. Enjoy your trip. You're where are you right now in Europe? I'm actually I'm in Greece. Oh, in uh, Greece, uh, great. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah, I'm I'm planning yeah. to go back to Geneva uh, next spring. Uh, I went to a couple of summer schools there, and my brother uh, used to work for UN United Nations in Geneva. Uh -oh. So uh, yeah, sure. so I'm looking forward to to just go back. And that's that's something about Europe, you know, how much they love jazz. You know, we take it for granted, but they you know that. Go ahead. That's so true, and this I think this record, you know, especially uh, that's just we've been so uh, happy and so so um, you know um, uh, pleased with what we've been hearing from from you know, all over Europe. It's been really fantastic. So uh, I think you know the states gets it also, but for some reason Europe just seems to uh, really uh, really love Errol in particular. Absolutely. Well, Peter, thank you so much for your time. Well, thank uh, you, thank you so much. Yeah. It's, Pleasure talking to you today, and I'll uh, I'll um I look forward to uh, hopefully speaking with you again. You absolutely, know, so absolutely. Come around, so. and and give my best regards to Miss Susan Rosenberg. You know, tell her that we miss her, and hopefully, maybe next time we get her uh, 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 online with you as well. I will, and uh, yeah, I'm sorry that she missed uh, had to miss it today, but uh, um, I'll, I'll send her best. Wonderful, and you have a wonderful trip back. Thank you. Talk to you soon. Bye bye. All right, take care. Bye bye.